Okay, it's a visual. Every time you do something against your integrity, little angels are gonna cry and they're gonna make water. Do you wanna be swimming in a pool of your mistakes? Or do you wanna like have a little puddle? And we're all gonna have puddles because we're, because we're human, okay? You got that? Okay, so less tears from the angels so you don't have to be swimming in a pool for the rest of your life, okay? Got it, make sense? Yes. All right. Welcome, sixth grade students. Okay, my name is? Miss Patricia. Miss Patricia, and I am here to teach you another one of Love for Life's social and emotional learning classes. Okay, it's usually a 12-week program, but last time Jacenia was here and the last class you had was? Responsibility, okay? So I'm gonna go over one today, but the first thing I want you to remember is what you agreement, your agreement that you signed off in your books. That what says in this classroom? Stays in this classroom. Right? And you have to be what with your answers? Authentic. Authentic, which means you're gonna say what you wanna say regardless if somebody likes it or not, right? Make sense? Because you have something to? So, okay, got it? All right, so we're gonna start. The main thing we're gonna start with, remember, is this. You guys remember this? Remember what that stands for? Who knows what that stands for? This is BAM breathing, right? We start off with our BAM breathing, which is about your body, your attitude, which is your heart, where you hold all your emotions, and your mind. We want a healthy body, a positive attitude, and a focused mind. And how do we do that? One main way we get to that, you guys, is through our band breathing. So we take our right hand and we put it on our heart. heart. Left hand, we put it on our abdomen, which is right between your rib cage. Okay? The whole goal that I want you to just kind of think about when your eyes are closed and getting in tune with your body is you want to breathe like you want to breathe like this. You want this to move, not, not this to move. So your air is going to come all the way deep down and stretch out your diaphragm, which triggers your little vagus nerve. You know, let's go to vagus. That vagus nerve is going to help you relax. You can do this at home. You can do this anywhere. Okay, so you ready? Let's close our eyes. I know you feel silly. It's okay. Nobody's looking at you because everybody else's eyes are so lightly close your eyes and see if you can see the peaceful darkness. So now we're going to deep breath in your count to five. And at the top of your breath, breathe out five, four, three, two, one. As you take a deep breath in your count to five, I'm going to come around and ground you. I want to see if you can ground yourself. Let's take the B and BAM while you're breathing. And let's focus on how our body feels. Are you hot? Are you cold? How are your eyebrows? Can you relax them a little bit and relax your eyelids? See if you can relax your shoulders just a little bit. Let them sink down. See if you can feel the weight of your body on the chair. See if you can feel the weight of your feet on the ground. Take note of what's going on in your body. There you go, there you go. Are you hungry?
If anything's sore, just take note of everything. Now take a deep breath in. Three, four, five, hold it slowly. Breathe out through your nose. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's shift your thoughts from what's going on to your body to what's going on inside of your attitude, your heart, where you hold all your emotions. Are you happy? Are you sad? Are you excited? Are you feeling a little nervous? Are you feeling stressed out about something? Something happened this morning, yesterday. Just take note of what's going on in your heart. And remember, I know probably Jasenia talked to you about how powerful your heart is. And that heart of yours sends more messages out to your body. Than we thought your brain did. So just take note and honor the feelings going on in your heart and shift your thoughts right now. I want you to picture one thing you're most grateful for. Just picture it with your eyes closed. Is it a person? Is it a place? Is it a thing? Is it a mom, a dad? Is it a pillow? Is it a blanket, a sweatshirt? Is it a puppy? What is that one thing you're most grateful for? Let's breathe into that with grateful thoughts. Last real quick, honor those feelings and let's shift our thoughts to what's going on inside of our mind. Are they positive or negative thoughts in there? Right now you're thinking something, right? Just be mindful of what you're thinking. And if it's off and it's about homework or friendships or a test or a ball game, just bring yourself back to the present moment. Everything right now is fine. Take a deep breath in. Breathe out slowly. As you take a deep breath in this time, breathe everything that's good in the air that your body wants and hold on to it. Breathe out everything else your body doesn't want and give it back to its source with love. Another deep breath in. Breathe in everything your body wants. Keep everything that's good in the air that your body wants. Breathe out everything else your body doesn't want. Give it back to its source with love. And repeat after me. I am kind. I am smart. I am important. I am powerful. I have something to say. I can change the world. And I am loved. Take a deep breath in. Breathe out slowly. Okay. Open your eyes. What did you connect to in your BAM breathing? What was most prevalent? Like, what did you feel the most of? What's going on in your body? You hungry? You tense? What's going on in your heart, your attitude, your whole, all your feelings? Are you worried about something or excited? Or what's going on in your mind? Uh, oh my gosh. You know, those thoughts of I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough. What does she think of me? Is somebody gonna call on me? I didn't get my homework done, I'm gonna fail my test. 
he doesn't like me, she doesn't like me, nobody's going to talk to me, I feel lonely, la la ba ba ba. Right? Can you hear the chatter? Why do you think you have that chatter? Because you're human, right? It's there. But guess what? Now that you know it's there, and you can take note of what's going on in your body, your attitude, and your mind, and you're like, oh my gosh, I hear you, little mind. Cha, 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 cha. But I'm not going to let you do that, okay? So then you can change how you think because you're mindful of it. Does that make sense? Okay, so I feel can't see that. Evelyn, I feel? I feel happy. Because? Because I came to school and I woke up feeling just great. I woke up. I woke up, coming to school, I feel happy. How many felt like that this morning? Oh, I love you. Okay, if that's a snapshot of the world, keep your hand up. Are we doing okay? Are we doing okay? Yeah. All right, so what else do we have? Not everybody's happy, right? How many did not wake up happy today? Right? Right? <laughs> tired, right? How did you wake up? How do you feel? Uh, I felt very tired because last night I had to go to my friend's house and then we did a want to. I wanted to stay home. And then I just woke up so mad. I don't know why. You woke up mad, okay? How many people wake up mad sometimes? Is that okay to be mad? Because we're? Okay, so when you're mad, are you still mad? I feel better now. Why do you feel better, you think? I don't know. I just feel like better atmosphere. Better atmosphere, right? Sometimes home can make you mad, right? How many have siblings? Do they make you crazy? Oh, yeah, right, right. Okay, okay. Now remember, you can change the temperature in your household by what you think, say, do, and feel. You ready? You can change the temperature of anything. Temperature of a classroom, meaning is it, is it cold and uncomfortable, or is it warm and nurturing and loving? You guys can change that. Did you know that? Did you know that? How many knew that? Smart. Okay. How many know that now? Okay. So, if you're going home and somebody's screaming or a sibling is on you, right? Oh my gosh, it sounds like you're having a really tough day. Can I help you out? What would your parents do if you said that? What do you want, right? Because they're not used to you being that kind, right? But if you're sincere about it, how do you think your parents would feel? If you said, oh my gosh, it sounds like you're having a tough day. Can I help you? What would they do? Be what? Be proud. Be proud. How would your mom or dad feel if you said, oh my gosh, mom, she's yelling right at you, or he's yelling, or you're a guardian, or who are yelling at you, Naylene? They'd feel proud. What else would they feel? Happy. They'd be weirded out, right? Like, oh my God, who, who's in your body, right? What? She's not my daughter. Well, why aren't you that person? If you know something is going to make your parents happier and it can change the household temperature, why aren't you doing it? Because maybe you haven't thought of it, right? Are you powerful? Yeah. Are you powerful? Yes. Then choose to use it by what you do. Make sense? All right. So last week we talked about what was it, maybe four weeks ago with Jacenia, you did responsibility? Okay, so we're gonna do something else today, but first, first. Oh, that's not. This is not your class? Uh, where's Miss Brown? Miss Brown, are there two people you think maybe might need some confidence building? Woo, come on. Nestle? All right, what part is this? What part is this? What part of the class is this? The mantra. The mantra, or the motto part, which is the confidence building. Okay, we had somebody else up here. 
Evelyn. Who was it? Come on up. Nope, you don't need your books. I got, I got a book for you. All right, so this is the confidence building part, right? Do you guys remember this part? What's the second scariest thing in the whole world that people say besides dying? Yes. I'd be with you on that, but no, it's even public speaking. Isn't that crazy? Everyone, adults too, public speaking is the scariest thing. Now remember, when I was your age, younger, I couldn't order at McDonald's. Moi, couldn't order at McDonald's. I couldn't talk on the phone. I was scared of everything. I had psoriasis all over my body. I was scared, 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 scared. I don't know why. I don't know what I thought was going on. I was so scared. One day, I'm ordering at McDonald's. Come on up here. I'm ordering at McDonald's. Here's my sister. She's 11 months older than me. And I whisper in her ear that, I don't know, I want a Big Mac. I want a Big Mac. She turns around and she says, no, I'm not ordering for you anymore. Go ahead. I'm not ordering for you anymore. She walks away. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Have you heard anything like that? How many of you are scared sometimes? Nervous, right? All right, that's OK. Guess what? It probably will never go away. I talk in front of hundreds of people. Do I sound nervous to you? I'm the same person I was when I was little. Okay, but there are skills you can learn to help manage how you feel. Okay? Confidence and public speaking are one of them. When you become a freshman, you're going to have to get up in front of the class more. And guess what? You're going to remember these skills that Jasenia and I teach you. Okay? So, how do you feel up there? Are you a little nervous? Is it okay to be nervous? Yeah. Is it okay to be uncomfortable? Is it okay to have fear? Yes. Is it okay to panic? No. Why? Because why? It gets worse because you get emotionally hijacked, right? Your emotions all of a sudden like take over and you're like, ah, ah, right? And you don't have any logic. So if you're swimming in a pool and you get really scared and you start panicking, you're going to sink. If you can remember to take a breath, get present with what's going on, you'll remember to just relax and float, okay? When you're with somebody who's in trouble and you panic, that person's not gonna make it because you're not gonna be able to think. You take a breath, you look at the situation, and it will help calm you down so you get out of panic and you can get into fear. Fear is okay, right? We have fear because we're human. human. All right, so a little nervous? Okay, so what are we doing with our toes? We take our talons, we tighten our toes, and we stick our talons in the ground, okay? All your nervous energy goes in your toes, like that, right? So they can't see what's going on on our toes, okay? The second thing we're gonna do, come on over here, love. Second thing we're gonna do is, we're gonna do a power pose. You know like the women power pose? Wonder Woman, right? Or Captain America? or Thor with this big thingy that he flips around, right? His hands are always up here, right? They're always, they're always this big, right? When animals fight, they're getting up on their, on their feet, right? When snakes bite, they fan out their neck and they do this crazy stuff, right? So humans are the same way. We release really cool like cortisol and all these things that come out in our body when we have power poses. This is how I learned to not be scared all the time. I research this stuff. This is science. It's not me making this stuff up. So let's give you your power pose. How are you going to do it? Your feet are right under your shoulders. Okay, so the crisscross is not a power pose. This is not a power pose. Feet, book, okay. Guess what we're going to put in our mouth? A a what? Smile. Somebody said, did anybody say a bit? Do you guys know what a bit is? A horse's bit. Does anybody know what a horse's bit is? Does anybody horseback ride? A horse's bit is this metal thing that goes in their mouth, right? And it pulls them up and it puts a smile on their face, okay? So watch what happens. She grabs her feet, puts them in the ground, 
takes a a what? A breath, puts a bit in her mouth, her shoulders come up, and she smiles. Smile. We're more beautiful when we smile. So smile. Human beings like to look at beautiful people. I don't care what you look like. As soon as you smile, you're more beautiful. And humans are attracted to beautiful things, and a beautiful thing to a human is somebody who smiles. Did you ever hold a baby, and then you smile at them, and they smile back? They're mirror neurons. Yeah, mirror neurons. Human beings have mirror neurons. See? It works. OK? Yeah. All right? So there you go. All of a sudden, you're more beautiful when you smile. And guess what a smile releases? So weird. Can you say dopamine? And what does it help you do? Don't be mean. It's the craziest thing, right? So you smile. OK? So. Toes, talons in the ground, take a And we're going to talk with our eyes. So you're going to have to look up twice and talk with your eyes, OK? So we're going to do one, two, three, action. You ready? One, two, three. Action. I am courageous, confident, and in Stay, 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 stay. What did you like about it? What did you like about it? Uh, what I liked about it was that she was very confident in her speaking. She was confident in her speaking. What did you like about it? She, she looked at the audience and she was really close to them. She looked really and looking at the audience. She was reading, she was looking at the audience. What else? Anybody else? Yes. Is it okay to be uncomfortable? Can you still do, do your best, right? Can you make a mistake and fail and still do your best and be okay? Yeah, you guys. If you make a mistake and you're up there and you're okay, we're okay. Okay, your audience will always be okay if you're okay. If you stop and you're like, oh, dang, then we're uncomfortable. But if you kind of laugh and go forward, we're okay as your audience, all right? That was awesome, thank you so much. I love it when people are uncomfortable and they do super. Thank you. In the eyeballs, yeah, awesome. All right, how are you up here? Um, I'm feeling nervous. I'm nervous. Is it okay to be nervous? Yeah. yeah. Is it okay to be uncomfortable? Yeah. Is it okay to have fear? Yeah. Yeah, is it okay to panic? No. no. So you take them? Ah, and it automatically will calm you down, right? So what are you doing with your toes? Tighten your talons. Those talons in the ground, okay? So where's your power pose? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So is this power pose? Okay. Maybe put one hand on your shoulder. I mean, on your hip. One hand on your hip. Okay. So she's probably really quiet, right? Well, let's see if we can change that. Okay. So you're gonna look up at the audience twice. Okay. Toes, breath, bit in your mouth. Because we're more beautiful when we? Smile. So? Smile. OK. Project your voice to the back of the class. One, two, three. Action. Action. Yes. Woo! How do you feel? How do you feel? It was super, right? What'd you like about it, Dimitri? Both of them changed from the time that they walked up there. They both didn't want to do it, and once they did it, they just seemed like they were superwoman. Superwoman. It feels good, right? What'd you like about it? Give me, give me, give me something. Yes. What'd you like about your partner up there? She was looking at the audience. She was looking at the audience. Okay, yes. And she smiled, right? How did she make you feel? Right, right. So we affect each other, right? We are powerful. You go into your house and you're happy and you put a smile on your face even though you may not be. You're going to get somebody in your house to start mirroring you. Use your power for good. Thank you very much. Will you shake my hand?
<coughs> awesome, awesome. OK, cool. So confidence building, very important. Everybody's afraid of public speaking, and that's OK. The more you do it, the more you'll learn. OK, talk with your? OK? And always? Smile. All right. So this week, we are going to do another R word, but Sammy, remember this from your last time? Responsibility. Do you remember that whole wheel you had to do being responsible? Because what is the only thing that you can control in your whole life? The only things you can control? Your attitude. Yes. The only things in your, and you think of something, anything that you think is beyond this. The only things you're in control of is what you think. That's it. There's nothing else in the world that you're in control of. You're not in control of what other people think, say, do, or feel. You're not in control of the weather. You're not in control of your teachers. You're not in control of your siblings. You're not in control of the homework you get. You're not in control of how much time you have to do your homework, unless you're taking out your video time and putting it in there, right? All you're in control of is what you think. And that, my friends, is the key to life. I don't care where you come from, what you look like, where you live, what kind of car your family drives, what kind of clothes you have, what school you go to. If you're not going to school, if you're going to do a trade, I don't care what it is. The only thing that you're in control of while you move through life is what you think, say, and do, and feel. And your whole world is in your, in your mind. And who controls that? Yeah. So once you feel it being a little bit negative, Who's responsible to change it? Who is? Oops. Who's responsible to change how they feel once you're going downhill? How many get sad? How many get really sad? How many sometimes get so sad I don't know how many get out of it? OK. Whose responsibility is it to find a way to get out of it? Yours, OK? And so that responsibility comes in learning the skills of resilience. Does anybody know what this means? OK, who wants to make it up? Come on, let's make it up. Resilience might mean, Julian? Make it up. What does it sound like? Feelings. Part of it is feelings. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Very good. Yes. Um, What's your definition? The to, like, back. Oh, love you. Ability to. The ability to. Okay, so I need a uh, one, two, three. Guys, come on up to the front of the class. All right, so resilience is the ability to what? Bounce, Bounce back. back. From what? From a birthday party? From chicken soup? To bounce back from what? What is it? The ability to do what? To bounce back from what? Your attitude when you're happy? Resilience is the ability to bounce back of times of stress, pain, disappointment, trauma, being uncomfortable, being sad. It's the ability to bounce back. And at your age, there's probably, how many think that there's a lot of stressors going on in your life? How many have stressors? How many are stressed out about things? Am I the only one? You're not stressed out about anything? Love you. <laughs> I want that life, yeah? OK, so what are some of those things we get stressed out about? This is what I want you guys to do. OK, this is what they're going to do. Ready? You're going to start right here nice and light. Okay, 
And when they say something that I'm going to write on the board that you agree that it stresses you out, you're going to move your little, this is your little self. And you're nice and healthy. Now you're going to get a stressor. And you're going to move it. And you're going to move it. Okay? So only move it when you agree that that stress stresses you out. Okay? Okay? All right. So. All righty, you guys. We're quiet. Raise your hand. Give me a stressor. Yes. <laughs> it's always number one. Siblings. Raise your hand if you're siblings. Sibling. Siblings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see my kids be siblings and it stresses me out, right? What else? Come on. What do you got? Yes, Joanna. What? Tess. Who, who agrees with that? Oh, yes. What else? Come on, come on. April. Uh, homework. homework. Yes. How many agree with that? Let's go. Come on. Call them out. Presentations. Presentations. Oh yes. What else? Getting along with people. Getting along. People stress you out. How many feel like people stress you out? Okay, look around the room. Hey, hold on. Look around the room. If we are a snapshot of the world and people stress most of the class out, are we in trouble? Yeah. yeah. So what are we going to do about it? Learn how to be resilient with it. OK, wait, we need one more. Yeah, what? Two more, three more. What? Come on, say them nice and loud, out loud. Kids. 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 <laughs> what else? Oh, expectations from parents, yes. What else? Yes. Looks. Oh my God, that's a huge one. Looks. Am I good enough? How many feel that sometimes? Am I good enough? How I look? How I act? What kind of friend I am? How about friends? Do they stress out? How many friends, how many people get stressed out by their friends? Yeah, friendships. What else? What's going on at home? Yeah, you do know. Say it. One thing. What? Chores? What? Chores? You don't have chores. God, you stress me out. All right, so. Yes. Yes! The whole fighting everywhere. You got moms, dads, brothers sick, sort of uncles, aunts. The dogs fight, like everybody fights, right? We fight because we're human, right? But how are you in that? How are you when that's happening around you? Are you jumping in? No. Are you feeling sad? Are you closing the door? Are you getting depressed? You're jumping in, April. Oh, goodness gracious. Yes. School. What else? What do you get stressed out about, Miss? Miss Brown, look at this. I knew that looked weird. Nobody was going to tell me. My daughter's fighting. Daughter's fighting, right? OK, this is what I get stressed out about. Financial, right? Education for my kids. Taxes. Taxes, exactly. Dimitri, what do you get stressed out about? All about financial. Yeah, yeah. And? Bus passes, right? What else? Our president, Our president right? <laughs> What's tomorrow? Deportation. All these things. So we have, like, food. What am I going to make for dinner, right? Where am I going to live? The mortgage. So we got all these parent things coming home to all these kid things. What the goodness gracious mama mia, right? So are you joining in to help your parents and family be resilient? Or you don't even know how to do that yet, right? So here's what you do. How many of you just kept going? Did you keep going? Did all those agree with you or two agree with you or all of them agree with you? OK, here's the thing. Keep it out. Nice and light. Move it. Ready? Expectations. Looks. Friendship. 
chores, fighting, tests, homework, stop. Here you are, your well-being just went from here to here. If you keep going without finding a way to bring yourself back to a healthy, steady being, what's going to happen to you? You're going to snap. Yeah. And your rubber band is what? Your mind, your heart, right? How you feel about yourself, how you feel about other people, how you feel about the world around you. You're just going to snap. And you're going to scream. You're going to yell. You're going to cry. You're going to go in your room. You're going to kick your feet. You're not going to do any work, right? Do make sense? Right? Maybe you just will curl up and then I'm not doing my homework because I have so much to do, I can't even do it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Sometimes you connect with that. Well, guess what? If you're resilient people, you learn that you're not alone. Everything you feel, somebody in this world has felt or is feeling. And they live through it. Now, you guys haven't learned yet that this too shall pass. Did you know that? Do you know what that even means? How many knows what that means? Red, tell me, what does it mean? Find the light, right? No matter the tough times you're you're, that are coming, there's going to be light at the end of the tunnel. So when we say this too shall pass, it's really hard at your age to know because your life is a little bit shorter, but it passes. And, and resilient people understand that this situation I am in right now, I can find help with, to deal with, and there's ways I can do it myself because it will pass. I need to get through it. I need to bring myself back to a healthy state of being. And how do we do that? OK? OK. This is one thing we're going to go over. Mud first. First, let's do this, OK? I would love you to stand up one by one as quickly as possible. We're going to do it by row, all right? OK, so you're going to stand up real quick. Stand up. If you knew me, you would know I get really stressed out when? If you knew me, you would know I get really stressed out when? When what? What? People are fighting. What does it do? Like shut you down? Does it make you want to cry? What does it do? What? I get nervous. How many get nervous when people fight? OK. And that nervousness, thank you very much. Brave people share, right? That's awesome. So when people fight, yes, stand up, young lady. If you knew me, you would know I get really stressed out when? People put pressure on me. People put pressure on me to what? Paint your toenails? It's like, they're like, you have to do this and this. And I get really pressured and I wonder, like, am I even good enough? How many feel like that sometimes? OK. What else we got? If you knew me, you would know. I get really stressed out when? Uh, I get really Like right now? I get nervous. What would happen if you messed up? <laughs> oh, there we go. There it goes. Right out in the open. People make fun of me. How many people are afraid people are going to make fun of me? Raise your hand. If people are making fun of you, guess what? Guess what? If, if I'm making fun of you, you look what? You look if I am making fun of you, there's something about you that's important. Otherwise, I wouldn't have you anywhere around what I'm saying or doing. OK, if somebody's making fun of you, one, they're not a very kind person, right, at that moment. But you're pretty important because you're there. So you're taking up space in that person's life. And they want to kind of make sure that you might feel a little silly. 
So what's one thing you can do in that situation? Make a joke about it? What can you say? What's one resilient person saying? Oh, psh, I don't like how you dress. And then I look at my friends, and my friends kind of laugh. What do you say? Nothing. Nothing? That's cool. But what could you say? What's one resilient thing you could say? I don't care, but you do care. How about this, you guys? How about this? Wow. You're a really nice person, and that wasn't very nice. You're a really nice person, and that wasn't really nice to say to me. What did you just do in front of that person and all his friends? Right. But you, were you being mean? No. Oh. But you stood up for yourself. OK? Oh, it's not very nice. You're a nice person. Or that wasn't really nice, and I'm a nice person. Like, hello? OK? Resilient people have something to say. So say it. You say it respectfully towards yourself, others in the world around you, and you're doing great. So real quick. Resilient people have to do things for themselves, OK? So when I needed help, guess how many people it took me to get help? One? Nope. 12? 11 people. I promise you, there are people in this world that will help you. Excuse me. Why are you guys here? Yeah. Why? Because it's important to me to make a difference in the past. And because I have always been an advocate for youth, and now this time in my life, I can actually give up. Do you think there are a lot of advocates in this world for youth? No. How about you? I met you, you're my friend. Why are you here? Go. Why are you coming back? I like, I also love kids. Yeah. Do you think there are a lot of people who would help kids? I don't think it would be a lot, but it's still out there. Everybody's going to help them. So you might have to go through 10 people to get help? <coughs> I think differently than they do. I think there are a ton of people out there that will help you. You have to find them. It's up to you to find them. It's not up to your parents. You can ask your parents, but they may be so stressed out, they may need somebody to help them, right? How many think maybe your parents need help? Yeah, hello? Look around you. If this is a snapshot in the world and all the parents need help, how are we doing? We need help, right? But you're resilient. You know what resilience means. Resilient people go out and get the help they need. They go out and get the help they need for school. If you can't get through a grade and you're having a tough time, You'll find somebody. Miss Brown will help you. If she can't, she'll find somebody else who can. What about with depression and sadness? If you tell your parents, they might feel bad. Can they help you? Maybe not. Somebody in your church, somebody in your community, your neighbor, a friend, an aunt, an uncle, a grandparent. Okay? There are people out there, but you have to find them. Resilient people find a way to get help. Does that make sense? That makes sense? Okay, That's so. very true, by the way. You just keep asking until someone says yes. Let that see. You want to go to college? How many want to go to college? I don't know, maybe. I don't know, maybe. What does I don't know, maybe mean, Israel? Uh, get a degree. I don't know. Okay, how many would go to college if somebody gave you the money to go? Okay. You have no money to go. Who's still going to college? Scholarship. Where there's a will, there's a way. You can start college with a job and working at night. And you do it. And it takes you longer. You can go to El Camino Community College, right? You can go to community college. You take your classes. You go to work. You meet the right people. You go to companies. You ask, hey, I really like the marketing in this company. Uh, can I come see what you guys do? Don't you think they're going to allow you to come in and meet people? I promise you a company will do that. It's up to you to be resilient enough to go out, get the help you need to have a happy life. Does that make sense? OK. What's your biggest stress? Mm. 
my biggest stress might be what? Homework. Homework. Tests. 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 How many agree with that? OK. So maybe a quarter of the class. How many siblings? How many parents? OK, so we're kind of what? So the takeaway on this is we're kind of all the same, right? Does that make sense? You guys can sit down, give them a round of applause for their stressfulness. OK, resilience, the ability to bounce back. So turn to page nine. Where are we? Well, we're going backwards here. What page are we on? 11. Yes. What page? Twenty-two. Real quick. The top things that stress me out the most are having money, homework, my looks, my health. Check off what you connect with. Brothers, sisters, losing on games. How many play video games? Okay. All right. So see that word right there? What does it say up there in red? Stop. Stop. So these big emotions that you guys have, okay, look at me, you guys. These big emotions that you guys have. Are you the only one who has them? Are you the only one who has them? No. Okay. So if you shared your big emotions with your friends or your family, do you think they might understand? No? no? It's okay. Is it okay if somebody isn't going to understand your situation? Is it okay? Okay. Can you still talk to them about it? Do you think it'll make you feel better? If you need help, do you think you can find somebody to help you? Okay. So. Do we have a few minutes or no? OK, so who gets really upset a lot? Yeah, easily. Can you come to the front of the class? Come to the front of the class. OK, yep, come on. All right, so I get really mad. Big emotions, right? Anger, madness, right? Resilient people are normal. They're human beings. They have lots of emotions. We all do, right? Resilient people, OK? What happens when you get really mad? There's this thing that's inside of our brain. It's called the amygdala. And I call it like your barking dog. And he comes out. What's, what's your dog look like? Mine's a big, like, um, what are those, like a Doberman Pinscher. It's got big claws. It's black and white. It's got mean teeth. I'm a Doberman Pinscher. When I get mad, my Doberman Pinscher comes out. And I'm like, Ugh! what's yours? German Shepherd, scary, yes? Pitbull. So we got a Pitbull and a German Shepherd. Okay, so here's, I'm mad. You guys are fighting about what? What are you fighting about? Are you siblings? What are you fighting about? My siblings. Okay. What are you fighting about? Stuff we have. Stuff we have. Okay, so I want the remote control. Is that it, right? Okay, yes. All right. Whatever it is you're fighting about, right? You get mad. That big emotion comes out, right? Resilient people know. I can feel it's coming out. Okay? OK? Look at each other. You're fighting. You're mad. You are ready to what? Fight. OK? That's normal. You get that adrenaline, that cortisol, and you want to fight. OK? Resilient people can feel that. And if you don't stop at that minute that you feel that way, especially at home, especially at home with your family, right, where you want to just they're fighting and you want to step in. Who is that? You say you step in. Who said they were stepping in? You. No. Right. If you, if you can find a way to train yourself not to step into that, your dog comes out, you are angry. Your dog jumps out. My Doberman comes out all the time with my kids, right? But if I became a Doberman, I let him out of his cage and my kids, dogs are out of their cage, what's going to happen? Ah! We're going to fight. Are we going to get anywhere? Is it going to feel good? No. Okay. So 
All right, so you're mad. I want the remote control, whatever. You're screaming back and forth, right? Your dogs come out. So we got the pit bull against the German shepherd. Engage. Engage, what happens? Give me the remote control right now. Give it to me. I had it first. Oh, I took it from your side. <laughs> See, now how long can this go on for? Forever, uh, forever right? Are you getting anywhere? Right now. Yes. I already called the dip on it. Okay, so here's what happens. Their dogs come out. It doesn't get pretty. Okay, you are in control of what you... Hey, what you? So your dog can come out. You want your dog to come out. You want to get mad. You want to, it's okay. Everything's good. But if you can control the big feelings that you have when you're sad or mad or nervous or scared, and you say, I've got you, little puppy dog. You keep your teeth out. Just don't bark. I'm not going to let you out. I can even open the gate, but I'm going to control my dog, right? by taking a breath and knowing that you're in control of that animal inside you because we all have it. That's human, what you feel is okay. But I beg you to make the choice next time when your parents are fighting or when your friends are fighting, you wanna step in like you've wanted to, to just stop. That's the S. T is take a breath, just take a breath. Fighters, take a breath. Always observe what's going on. What's going on while you're fighting? He won't give me back to right. The okay. Then you're going to proceed with what's best for you, for others, and the world around you. So you're going to stop. You're going to take a breath. You're going to observe what's going on. What is your part in it? What's your part in it? What if you said something like, what's a good thing to say when you're proceeding? Come on. Give me something to say. I want the remote. What? So you're, you're talking for him, though. He's got the remote. You want it. What can you say? What would make you give the remote to somebody? Give me the remote? No, no. OK, hold on. Hold on. What will help you? You. You're tough. What would make you want to give the remote to somebody? Or you keep fighting, right? It's not going to get you anywhere. OK, so what you could do at that point is say, hey, I really want to play two. How long do you need it for? Can I, can I just use it for five minutes? What is it that I can do? When can I have it? Can I play with you? When's the last time you asked your, your, your brother or sister to play with you? Yeah. OK? So there are things that you can do to proceed with what's best for you, others, in the world around you. What's one thing you could say? Yes, what were you going to ask? Um, what if they don't like let you play with them, or you don't like what they're watching? OK, so how many people don't like what they play or what they're watching? OK, you guys. This is, this is it. This is life. Are you in control of them? Will you ever be in control of them? Will you ever be in control of anything other than what you? So now that you know you cannot control people, all you can control is who you are in the situation. And if you treat it with kindness and respect, I promise you things will change around your house. And I challenge you, when you want to jump in, you stop, you take a? You observe what's going on. And what is your part in it? Because if you don't have a part in it, don't step in. You can't control it. You can only control who you are in it. Right? And if you bring love to it and you re bring respect and kindness in it, do you think that you could possibly change that situation? Yes. So that's all I'm asking you to do over the next week is to try that, OK? All right? Any questions? All right. So, yes. So I have a question. What if you're like doing mistake? Mistake. We get stressed 
Say that again? That's like, I will switch your erasing, your erasing by the time that what, 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 uh, who is a stressor, what is a stressor? And, uh, and I want to say that does, does, does mistakes stress you out? Do mistakes stress you out? Do mistakes stress the parents out? You guys, I make mistakes all the time. What I worry about at night is what kind of parent I am because I make so many mistakes all the time. And guess what? If you ask my kids what I say, I cannot beat myself up about it. I have ADHD. I forget things all the time. Sometimes I double book things. I make a mess sometimes of what's going on in our lives. But guess what? I'm a good person. It's OK to make mistakes. It's how you decide to look at them for yourself. OK? If you're doing the best you can, it's all you can do. That's all you can do. You can't ask any more of yourself. But if you're not doing the best you can, if you're not putting 100% in, can you change things? If you are putting 100% in, can you change things? No. So if you study 100% for a math test and you get a D, could you have done better? If you do 100% to study for that test and you get a D, could you have done better? No. 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 Should I say that again? If you do something 100%, can you do any better than that? How? If you do something 100%, can you do any better than that? No. But are you doing things 100%? If you do things 100%, you don't have to worry about anything. You don't have to worry about your grades. How many do 100%? Do you worry about your grades? Why? Uh, yep, parent pressure. But are you failing? No? What are you failing in? No, you're not failing. Do you think you can do better? So then you're not doing 100%. If you're doing 100% and you still have a D in math, what do resilient people do? But if you study, you're already studying 100%. Miss Brown. What do resilient people do when they're at 100% of learning? What can they do to get a better grade in math? They show grit and they keep trying. Keep trying and keep trying. And they try and access the resources around them in order to help them understand something. Because if you keep trying your 100%, all you got is your 100%. Resilient people go out and find a way to get better. How many in this class are really good at math? Okay. Do you know any of these people? Yeah. So can you teach me how to study? They were going to hold me back in school. In fifth grade, they were going to hold me back because I wasn't very smart. My mother's like, she's really smart. I didn't know how to study. So they matched me up with this girl who got A's, and I learned how to study. And guess what I got after that? A's. Because I learned how to study. But not my way. I learned how to study a different way that was good for me. Whose responsibility is it to get the grades you want to get? No. Your parents? No. no. Your teachers? No. no. Whose responsibility is it? Me. Yeah, by being resilient and knowing there's a way. If you're doing 100%, there is a way. OK? All right, so you get stressed out, you're going to what? Which means stop, take a, observe. observe what's going on, what's your part in it, and pro with what's best for you, others, and the world around you. Does that make sense, siblings? OK, all right, any questions? Thank you, you guys. Last question. Should we do the best of the night?
Okay, so some parents are really tough. And she feels they shouldn't be putting this pressure on you. Can you control your parents? No. no. But can you control how you feel about that pressure? That's all I'm saying, Kira. You can control what you feel about that pressure. Okay? All I'm saying is take a breath in it. All you need to say is I'm doing my best. I'll try harder. Okay? You cannot control what they want from you. All you can control is what you give. You're the only one who can control what you think, say, do, and feel. They can't control you. You can't control them. But you can give it your all. And that's all you can do. And once you know what you're doing, you have to let up on yourself. Because the way you feel about what your parents are saying, they're not feeling that. You're feeling that. Just change how you feel. And you change how you feel by what you think. I'm good enough. I'm doing the best I can. What you say, I'm working really, really hard, and my parents love me. That's why they're doing this. What you do, study harder, become more resilient, and then your feelings change, okay? How you feel changes how you think, how you think changes what you do, what you do changes the outcome of your life, okay? Okay, what do you think? How many like this class? Should we keep this class in the book? Resilience, this, this subject, how many like this subject? Okay, so um, two minutes. Um, can you guys stand up? So in um, like 30 seconds, what do you do? I'm a mom, but now I'm starting a new chapter in my life and I'm putting feelings out there for um, to work, to volunteer, and I have a few projects built in the background. Ah. But I have created them on my own. So did you have another job when you were young? Before I had kids? Yeah. I had several jobs. I got a degree at UCLA. Okay. Degree in biology, then I went into acting for a while, and then worked for companies, and then and I've been a mom for 16 years. I'm still a mom. And now they're old enough where I can kind of leave them a little bit. Can you sh shift your jobs and what you want to do in your life? Okay, you're never going to know what you want to do and how it makes you feel unless you try it. Yes. Mr. Dimitri, yes. what do you do? I'm a high school official. I represent high school sports, basketball, football, and softball. Do you think you're good at it? Yes. Does it make you happy? Yes. You know what was cool about him? He was refing my daughter's basketball game. My daughter's not very good at it. Sorry, Gracie. She's not very good at it. But she tries really, really hard, right? But they wouldn't throw her the ball because she's not good at it, right? So she'd run back and forth and back and forth. So he was watching these kids on different teams that weren't getting the ball passed to him. And he did this weird thing where the kids who weren't given the ball had an opportunity to get the ball. And then when they allowed them, they ran and they got baskets. And my daughter came off of that, that whole tennis uh, basketball court with a feeling of confidence and accomplishment. And I said, wow, that guy knows what it's like to help people feel good about themselves, okay? We all have that in us, to make people feel good about themselves. But I challenge you to do it first in your house, okay? By what you say and by what you do. Can you guys try that this week? Can you try to change the temperature in your household by what you think, say, do, and feel, yeah? Yeah. Okay, all right, let's close your eyes. Let's just put your hands out to your sides. Let's take a deep breath in. 
hands over your head. All the way up over your heads, put your hands together, bring them down in front of you. Do you want me to walk you through just a couple breaths? Okay. okay, just keep your eyes closed. Take a deep breath in, picture all the air that's going into your body, a big white light of mist coming into your body, wrapping around your heart, giving you lots of love and energy. healing the sadness and the anger and the pain. Take a deep breath in of excitement for life today and all the cool things you can do with what you think, say, do, and feel. I am kind. I am smart. I am important. I am powerful. I have something to say, I can change the world, and I am loved. Take a deep breath in. Be very grateful for your teachers and your principal and everyone who has this, allows you to have this class. And go forward with love and light. Anybody's feeling changed since the beginning of class? Raise your hand. I feel? Um, cold. Cold. Cold? Like physically cold? Ooh, I'm sorry. I feel happy because? I got new lizards. Awesome. Yes. I feel calm. Even though you're fighting with your sibling, how do you feel? I feel great. You feel great because? live another day. All right, you guys, have a great time.